Okay, so good evening. My name is Yi Xin. I'm a researcher from the Universi uh, Singapore University of Technology and Design, SUTD. So it's a very new university. It's a, I think it's the fourth public university in Singapore. So if you haven't heard about it, look it up on the web. So um, my research interest is condensed metaphysics. So we have, uh, we, have, we have listened to so many interesting talks just now. They're all about astronomies. So now let's go back to Earth. Okay, so condensed metaphysics is quite similar to material physics. I'll explain what it really is. So, um, so the first thing, what is physics? So this is a, a very open-ended question. So different people give you different answer. So for me, in my own opinion, it's a science that try to ask how stuff interacts. So there's a how there. So it means it's physicists are constantly asking questions. And stuff actually refers to anything that is physical in this universe. So it can be a ping pong ball, a galaxy, some, or it can even be something abstract like information, entropy, interacts. So because stuff interacts, so everything is kind of interesting. If there's no interaction between stuff, everything will be static and physics become meaningless. Okay? So this is my interpretation of uh, physics. In a, in a more technical sense, you can say that physics is the study of uh, the dynamics of the fundamental structure of the universe. So um, there are actually many branches of physics. So our, our, our modern world is actually driven by physics. So there are a lot of different fields. But today I'm only going to uh, concentrate on one field, that is the condensed metaphysics. So how many of you guys have heard about condensed metaphysics? Oh, it's good. It's good. So not, not quite many. So how, how, how many of you guys have heard about astronomy before this talk? So probably everybody heard about this, right? So it so looks like it's, uh, it's, you know, it's something strange, condensed met, what the hell, right? So, <laughs> so now I'll try to convince you that this is something, it's actually something interesting. So I, I, I looked up some, uh, I just dug out some uh, statistic from a very prestigious journal called Physical Review Letters. Okay, so it's like the, the golden standard of physics. So physicists do research and then they publish the articles. They have to publish it in some science magazine. Okay, so Physical Review Letters is one of the best in physics. Okay, so if you, if you go to their website, if you look at the, um, the, uh, the uh, articles, they actually sort their articles according to the categories. Okay, so if you look at the categories, there are quite a lot of them. But you will immediately notice that condensed metaphysics has the most papers. Okay, so it's probably a little bit difficult to uh, understand this quantity because they are just numbers. So we can actually represent it graphically. Okay. So if I set, if I equate, actually it's one font size, if I equate one font size um, to a thousand articles, and then I type the categories out, this is what I will get for the other categories, right? And for condensed metaphysics, we have this. So actually quite a lot. Even if I combine all the other fields into a category called, into a category called other physics, is still slightly smaller than condensed metaphysics. So condensed metaphysics is actually very active and very happening. Right. So a so long time ago, people thought that you know, electrons have these well-defined orbits around the uh, hydrogen atom. But later on, what they found is that if you, if you incorporate uh, the theory of electromagnetism into this classical orbiting model, what you get is that the electron will slowly lose the energy and then will spiral into the hydrogen atom. So what you will get eventually is an atomic collapse. And so in the end, you will have Nothing at all. But this is not true, right? We are all quite stable, right? Everything is stable, except the stock market. So, <laughs> so, so about 100 years ago, the physicists realized that the classical model is not correct. So they proposed that electron is actually a wave. And this is subsequently proven. It's subsequently proved in the experiments. So, so if, you, if you plug this wave nature into the equations and you solve for the equation, what you get is orbitals. Okay, so the electrons do not follow well-defined orbitals. They, they, instead, they, they are distributed quite randomly following certain patterns. Okay? And this starts the uh, very bizarre quantum mechanics. Okay? So um, this is actually the, the, the second hardest thing in the world. Okay? So the hardest thing is trying to uh, decipher what girls are thinking about. So there's the hardest <laughs> thing in the world. Okay? So this is only slightly easier than that. Okay? So quantum mechanics is quite hard. Okay? So, um, so this is only for one, one atoms, but 
in our everyday life, we are, we are dealing with billions and billions of atoms. Okay? So we have to put so many atoms together. So the collective dynamics of many, many tiny, tiny atoms and electrons is actually condensed matter physics. So condensed matter physics, we are trying to study how stuff behave when we condense a lot of atoms into materials, into matter. Okay? So, um, so as a condensed matter physicist, we are constantly looking for new materials. Okay? So we're looking for 2D materials, nanostructures, and then we try to identify interesting physics from these new materials. And then the next thing to do is try to map this theoretical knowledge into actual device application. For example, we can create molecular transistor, nanostructures, nanotransistors, there's ultra fast performance. And the most important thing is we try to think out of the box. Can we create new stuff, new applications out of these new materials? So one of the major achievements of condensed matter physics is the uh, systematic classification of materials. So this is the uh, simplest uh, classifications. So we classify matter into conductor, semiconductor, and um, insulator. So according to uh, classical theory, okay, uh, sorry, according to quantum theory, so we, the, uh, the uh, dynamics of electrons in condensed matter actually follow some very strange um, um, uh, band structure. So that means the electrons cannot live in anywhere. So they have to stay inside energy bands. Okay? So for, for a conductor, something like a metal, the electrons are, 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 can, can, can move quite freely in the energy band. This is because uh, there are a lot of sp space for them to move around. Okay? So if we go to an insulator, what we have is that the energy band split into two floors. Okay? We have an upper floor called a conduction band. And then we have a lower floor called the valence band. So the valence band is fully occupied. There are so many electrons there. So when you put a voltage, nobody can move because it's so packed. Okay? That's why insulator cannot carry electrical current. Okay? So there's a huge separation between the valence band and the conduction band. It's called the band gap. For semiconductor, the uh, energy band structure is quite similar as insulator, except that the band is quite small. So at finite temperature, if the temperature is non-zero, the fully packed, the, the, the localized electrons in valence band can actually be, be excited into the conduction band. So what you get are free electrons in the conduction band. So by applying a voltage, you can drive a current through semiconductor. Okay? So what is so great about semiconductor? The IBM guys are talking about semiconductor. The Apple guys are talking about semiconductor. Everybody is uh, they are, they are talking about the uh, semiconductor. So the fancy thing about se semiconductor is that it can be used as a transistor. Okay? So somebody called this call the transistor as the, uh, the king of modern electronics. Okay? And um, <coughs> it's a very important device because it can switch the current on and off. So this is the working principle of, uh, of a transistor a field effect transistor, or we, or we can call it a FET, F-E-T. So this is the band structure of a uh, semiconductor. So what we do is, what we can do is we can zap the uh, fully occupied valence band. We can zap those electrons. So what we get is the promotion of electrons from valence band to the conduction band. So in this case, we have a lot more electrons in the conduction bands. So we form a huge current. Right? So, so because there is a significantly increase of current, we can call this an on state. On the other hand, we can zap the electrons that are thermally excited into the, uh, valence, uh, into the conduction band. By doing so, we actually shift all the electrons back into the valence band. So in this case, all the electrons are localized. They cannot move. And so we have an off state. Okay? So this is important. This on-off switching is important because we can use on to represent one off to represent zero, and then we have digital electronics. We can make computers. So in order to have a good computer, we need to have something that consumes less energy, fast, small, and cheap. And that is actually the uh, objective of nanotechnology. So apart from the uh, conventional classification of materials, we have some exotic spin materials. So electron, except for carrying charge, they also have this quantum behavior. We call it spin. So <coughs> One fancy state of materials is called a half metal. 
So in this case, we only have electrons of one spin that can carry the uh, uh, electricity. All the other electrons are localized in the valence band. In another case, we have an even fancier system which has recently been found. We call it a topological insulator. So in this case, all of the electrons in the bulk of the materials are localized. They cannot carry current. But the electrons staying at the surface of the material can actually flow. Okay, so this is a topological effect. And one important thing is that um, the electrons flowing at the surface actually have this spin polarization. So electron with one spin can only flow in a certain direction. So you want to go backward, you have to flip your spin. But spin has to be conserved. So that means the electrical signal carrying by this spin charge will be very robust. So <coughs> nanotechnology is, uh, is, is one of the uh, major outcomes of condensed matter physics. So um, nanotechnology works in the length scale of few hundreds of nanometers. So if you want to visualize how one nanometer is, just take out a ruler, look at the one millimeter mark, subdivide it into one million slices, and each of them will give you one nanometer. So it's quite small. Okay? So the, the, the device in nanotechnology are usually in the range of several hundred nanometers. So it's even smaller than red blood cell. It's in the range of HIV virus. Okay? So uh, apart from this, Oh. Apart from this uh, nanoscale, another, another feature of nanotechnology is that they have a reduced dimensionality. Okay, so instead of having 3D bulk material, we can slice them down into thin film, into 2D thin film, and we can even cut them into nanowires. And if you want to be fancy, you can even make um, a quantum dot, which is a 0D materials. So do um, you guys see some dots there? You guys know what that is? It's a Morse code because it's impossible to encode 2D words in a 1D system. That's why I use Morse code for the 1D wire. Okay, so it means 1D. Okay. So um, this is actually the uh, first demonstration of this uh, nanotechnology thing. So it's, it's, it's made in um, late 80s. So this is called uh, quantum point contact. So if you look at this second diagram, there's actually a narrow channel between the two electrons. So these channels, the size of this channel is, is about 250 nanometer. So that means if you put a red blood cell in, the red blood cell cannot flow through. It's extremely small. So what, what physicists do is they sh shoot electrons across this, nano, uh, across this narrow channel. What they observe is that the conductance is quantized. The conductance increase in steps. Okay? This is actually a direct manifestation of the wave nature of electrons. Because electrons are wave, according to quantum mechanics. When they pass through this narrow channel, they form a standing wave mode. And this standing wave mode is, is quantized. Only certain wavelengths can pass through. That's why you have this uh, quantized effect. So this is quite, actually quite, quite uh, interesting, because you can see this quantum effect in a, in, a, in, a, in a mesoscopic device, in a real structures, in a, in a real device. So uh, an emerging field is called the uh, nanoelectronics. So this actually involves almost everyone in science and engineering. So one of the key focus of nanoelectronics nano is to try to uh, invent new device applications. Instead of using uh, electrons to make devices, now we are trying to use we're trying to use excitations in condensed matters uh, to make devices. So these excitations means that. When we put a lot of atoms together, we, <coughs> we can create, we, if we somehow perturb the system, we can create excitations. And in quantum mechanics, these excitations can be mathematically described as a quasi-particles, is a, is, a, is a virtual particles. So by manipulating these particles, we are able to produce a transistor, for example. We, 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 we can even make refrigerator. Another, another, another key focus of nanoelectronics is um, to test extremely high energy physics and cosmology in condensed matter environment. When electrons are moving in condensed matter, in, in crystal structures, what happens is that those atoms will give those electrons a dress. They dress up the electrons. So by arranging atoms in a certain configuration, we can let these electrons, we can, we can force these electrons to mimic energetic particles. So we can, we can actually test 
and search for exotic high energy particles in a low, em low energy condensed matter environment. So this is quite fancy actually. And another um, potential usage is to tap energy for information. Every day we, we, we create and we receive and we delete so much information. So when you take a photo, there is an information. We receive some messages, there is also an information. So what physicists propose is that by erasing the, this information, we can actually convert the change of the entropy, which is something like, like the change of energy, into real energy, which you can use as an electrical power or something like that. So, you can, so, so by deleting something, you can actually charge up your phone. <coughs> and, so, and because there is a, a relation between information and solid state systems, so condensed matter physics has also been actively looking at this uh, system. We call it solid state quantum information. So how we can create. So this is about like how we can create um, um, super fast quantum computer in solid state environments. So um, all of the, uh, the, 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 the fancy application I mentioned just now is, is not just a speculation. So in 2010, five years ago, IBM has actually created the fastest transistor in the world. So this transistor is made out of graphene, which is a single layer of carbon atoms. And I think they can switch on and off very rapidly about 100 billion times in a second. So that is the world record. That is the fastest transistor. And the energy consumption is quite low. Another thing we are trying to do is flexible screen. So imagine you have a 10 inches large screen. You can fold it and put it back into your pocket. So that's quite fancy. So this is also possible by using this uh, uh, condensed matter system because we can create ultra thin um, 2D film and which, which are quite flexible. Another interesting thing is the uh, quantum dot pigments. So instead of using chemical compound to create color, we can change the size of the nanoparticles. Because, this nano, because the, uh, when we change the size, we, we adjust the standing wave modes that can survive in these quantum dots. So by, by doing so, we can actually tune the color of the systems. <coughs> Another one is the, uh, the, the, the LED. We can, we can, we can use um, organic um, semiconductor to create flexible LED. So condensed matter physics is quite happening, and we have a lot of goals, we have many goals, we have many visions, and we do a lot of stuff. We are still not sure whether all of them can be realized. But uh, <coughs> what we are definitely sure is that uh, with condensed matter physics, we can create a better, a smarter, and a more sustainable future. So that's all I've got for today. So if you have questions, just ask me. <coughs>